Hello everyone, Max is here. Welcome back. Last time we battled against our rival in Mount Moon, saw the Clefairies dance they perform every Monday, and had a battle against the Celadon's gym leader, Erica. This time, I was going to head over to the Celadon condominiums and get something, but unfortunately the thing I was hoping to get is locked into post-game. But not all is lost because there's actually a new encounter here. Combi! The males are completely useless to you. Don't bother. If you get one, just consider it as it doesn't exist. What you're really looking for are the females, which appear a whopping one in seven time. These can evolve into Vespiquen. Vespiquen isn't exactly the most, I should say, conventional bug types. It is a very defensive focused one with three signature moves, Heal Order, Defend Order, and Attack Order. Attack Order has a high critical hit ratio, Heal Order heals it, of course, it's just a kind of a clone version of Recover, and Defend Order boosts its defenses. If I can check exactly which ones, which defense, how much defenses it is, if my thing can actually thing. And they evolve at level 21. Again, the males are completely useless to you. It has good HP, base 70, base 80 offenses, so it can do well mixed-wise. And solid 102 defenses and very bad 40 speed. It would be good defense. It is situationally quite defensive because it has some good. It has a good double resistance to fighting, which does counter against the flying type. Has a pretty wide move pool and access to some pretty mo unconventional moves like Power Gem. And also gets Slash, so it can do well as a mixed attacker that can also be a bit defensive. But at the same time, it's a bug flying type. It has a lot of weaknesses, which is problematic on a Pokemon that's trying to be defensive. Let's see. Uh, and defend order. It increases... Okay, so it boosts Vespaquen's defenses one stage each. Its ability is also pressure, which... It can wear down moves a bit faster, but it's... Not exactly the best option, I'd say, if you want something that's going to be defensive. There's really no good defensive bug types because they tend to not have the best defensive typings. Yeah, more often than not, it's the bug secondary typing that really kind of cripples them on defense because the like, bug on its own has some pretty decent defenses. It's really the secondary typing that the bugs inherit their strengths and weaknesses from. Like, you know, for example, bug flying versus bug electric. One of them is a good type offense-wise, and defense-wise. Well, the other is... not good, in most cases, because of kind of redundant coverage. Oh my gosh, what is it with you guys with weird level stuff? Ugh, this is annoying. Kind of just... okay, critically. Would that have catered normally? I don't know. It might not have catered normally. So close! Yeah, let's switch out. We gotta get some experience on Megalon. So, we are gonna be doing what I said last time. We're gonna be just kind of heading to a new area, getting a gym badge done, going up some things, and then moving on. Because unfortunately, that's kind of most of the post game of Heart Gold and Soul Silver, where you're not going out fighting Team Rocket or really doing a whole lot of other things. You're kind of just going around, sweeping up the last of the gym badges, and, you know, maybe filling out the rest of your Pokedex. There's really not much to do here, and why are you using Explosion? I hope you don't KO Megalon. Come on, tank it, tank it, tank it, tank it, tank it, tank it! No! Dang it! Yeah, stupid exploding gas balloon. All right, Kalyan, you're up. So, we're not going to be doing a whole lot in particular here, which kind of sucks, but on the other hand, uh, it's kind of better than having to slog through Kanto, because there is a decent amount of stuff we have in post-game to go over. There we go. 
Also, we got a pointless all stats up buff. That's stupid. Actually, wait. Uh, actually, yeah, we actually probably can do the thing in Saffron City I was thinking of doing a while ago, but we can now because now there's power restored. If you come down here, you can avoid most of those trainers. I chose to avoid most of them, but I accidentally got in that one fight because this place is kind of annoying. We have now arrived in, well, not necessarily a new town right now, but now a new town, Fuchsia City. For those of you who wanted the EV reducing berries, you can get them here. Which, that's good for... I'm probably gonna go use those for some things, because it is kind of annoying when you do have, you know, EVs in the wrong location, just, oh, I'm a physical attacker, but I have all these, you know, kind of bad special attacking EVs that are not really helpful to me at all, which, that does get a bit annoying, and I probably will be using those a bit, because there were a couple fights I probably could have used some rebalanced EVs for, and this is the guy over here, he's a lot like that one in... Yeah, this guy, he's a lot like the one in, uh, Violet City, uh, I do have shards, but I'm not going to go trade them right now. And over here we have, not the Safari Zone, but... Safari Zone is closed. Instead, we have Pal Park. If you have an original DS or any of the DS models that still had a GBA slot in the bottom, you can migrate Pokemon up from the older games. And you can catch them in here. I... Wish we had the stuff we could do here, so I'm not really going to be doing anything with this. Yeah. We don't have any Pokemon in here because I don't have a DS that has a second slot in it. I was an idiot and sold my old DS back when I... Well, I mentioned that a couple episodes ago. So we can't do this, unfortunately. But it's not really to anything in particular, it's not like, oh, you have to battle and catch him again. The park balls you get basically operate like master balls, where you encounter the Pokemon, throw the ball, and it's automatically caught. Which I do like. I am, I am definitely a big fan of that. So, we actually do have a couple of new areas we can go to. So, I think I am going to go over here before we actually go to the gym, because I'm changing things up a little bit. We're going wild. Route 15. I have memories of this place, and I love them. I'm just going to talk about something here, and that was a long time ago, back when this game was relatively new-ish. I had a strategy over here to catch Chansey. Because Chansey and uh, Pidgeotto, uh, yeah, Pidgeotto are the two highest level Pokemon here, if you get a Pidgeotto that is the highest level possible, use a Repel. You will only encounter Pidgeotto or Chansey, which can be a very effective technique for grinding experience, if you can get yourself a lucky egg. I may actually be crazy enough to do this. I'm not gonna get, you know, oh, five or six lucky eggs, but I'm probably gonna get one, maybe two, but I'm not gonna go overboard, so... You know, if I want to go, say, off-screen train, I can just kind of pass it around between my Pokemon. <laughs> Level 39 Bellsprout. <laughs> oh, my gosh, this is glorious. Glorious. I, I love... Part of me hates these levels because they're so bad, but part of me also loves them because I can just make fun of them so much. It's like, why? Why did the programmers think this was good levels to have? They don't give anything. Like, this is also kind of why I want to go get those lucky eggs. Because they will be helpful for these fights. They'll be very helpful for these fights. Weeping Melt. You have the whole evolutionary line, are you? Alright, I'm just gonna cut ahead.
Roasted Pitcher Plant. <sighs> but yeah, that was kind of my plan when it came to uh, Chansey, because my brother has a bit of a grudge against Chansey, because he had... it was either Silver or one of the Gen 1 games, this is the Silver version before one of his... And these are big, glowing, air quotes, friends, stole his silver version. He never could get Aerodactyl, which you needed to get by trading a Chansey. He never got a Chansey. So he didn't even register Chansey. And yes, we do have Suicune and Uzine. Maxis, not again. I'll be here first next time. Following here, I've started to understand what Suicune's after. Me. To be honest, I like to keep the animation to myself, but I want to be an honest trainer in front of Suicune. Suicune's not here anymore, you don't have to be honest because it's gone. That's why I'm sharing clues with you, it seems to be as hilly places near water. Somewhere north, I don't know exactly where yet, but it's, it'll just be you and me. Who will fight it first? I challenge you! Well, we've kind of already been there, sorry, and come on! Frickin' turn around. I'm like, like Wow, that's... After what I just said a couple of episodes ago, that does hit me pretty pretty deep. Side, uh... Okay. In recent days, I've actually grown to hate Eevee just that much more because I was reading up on, uh, Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee. And from what I found, like, apparently Junichi Masuda said that they chose Eevee over another Pokemon for the mascot of Let's Go because of all the fan art of Eevee, and the other Pokemon they were going to go with before Eevee was Psyduck. Let's Go Psyduck is a thing that needs to happen. It... Why? Why did we have to get Let's Go Eevee? We could have had Let's Go Psyduck. Just... Think of how silly that would be. Just Let's Go Psyduck, just... Psy back just Sadak on, on your like Sadak on your head or shoulder, just holding its head like it has a headache 24-7. Think of how hilarious and amazing that would be. Why did we not get that? I blame all of you Eevee fans out there for us not getting this masterpiece of an idea to be realized. And we don't have cut. I'll meet you guys back at Future City. Well, a drunken panda. Ba, ba, da, da, da. On the way back, we find a PP up. And no items. Alright, so we are back in Fuchsia City. 
Off screen, I might go and get myself more than a couple of lucky eggs. Not sure yet. I will do one battle in the Fuchsia Gym before making my ultimate decision on will I or will I not go do that. Pokemon Center, hurt Pokemon full health. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's heal up. Alright. Uh, I'm the one that kind of feels like the whole healing Pokemon animation thing takes a bit longer than it should. I mean, I get like that it has to be the kind of animation thing where like, the Pokeballs go in there, but... I feel like the more recent games kind of sped that thing up a little bit, which... Why the heck is there a ledge right here? Like, that's completely useless to have that ledge there. It's completely useless to just to make us walk a little bit longer. And... Jim! Oh no, there's multiple girls who all look identical in here, and... I like how this thing actually lights up the path. I like that sound effect. I, I very much like the sound effect. I'm Jamie, what'd you say it was real? Let's battle. Nope. So there's a bunch of fake ninja people in here. Which one is the real gym leader? The one in the center. If you've played yeah, we don't need those lucky eggs. Let's see how much experience we get from beating this thing. Well, this, this Nita Queen. If it's a decent amount, I actually might go get the lucky egg. Because I believe it's... What? Extra 50% experience? Which is actually pretty decent. Let's just check that for a second. Lucky egg. Like, this is really the first place I can say... You can get lucky eggs and mass reliably. Yeah, favorite study speeds. Okay, yeah, I'm I'm definitely gonna go go get those lucky eggs. See you guys. Stupid thingy. See you guys in a bit.